So if you're getting lower back pain from barbell rows, this video should be really useful. The main cause behind this pain is a muscular weakness within that 45 degree back angle. What I mean is you lack the isometric strength needed to do the exercise with heavier weights. So most lifters can maintain this upright position for many exercises. That's why you don't really hear problems when guys do shrugs. But the moment you bend them forward and perform rows, all of a sudden they can no longer do it. Why is this happening? Well, their hip hinge performance is not where it should be. Which means what? You need to get better at this. That, my friends, is called the RDL. So, what I'm recommending today's video is focusing on correcting your RDL to barbell row ratio. For maximum injury prevention and feeling 10 on 10 every single workout, I advise having your RDL be 200 pounds. Yes, you heard it right here, above your barbell row. For some that may be extreme, but put this in perspective, what are elite powerlifters who deadlift five, 600 pounds for reps doing? Rows in the 200s using super strict form. So what I'm saying is not uncommon if we're talking about doing the exercise properly. So don't get mad or view what I'm saying to be excessive. Maybe you'll be able to get away with 150 pounds above your row. All I'm saying is if there is a major strength distortion, which might have happened in the past due to not emphasizing deadlifts or hip hinge exercise in general like good mornings, well maybe that explains why you're stuck at a certain level, not because the upper back. The posterior chain is the issue and specifically keeping that tightness in the bent forward position. So if you can't do that, if you can't correct the root cause, then you won't be able to overload. It's as simple as that. And you have to accept that. Accept the fact that there's a weak link that needs to be addressed. And once you fix this, dude, it's an upward spiral. Things are only gonna get better, mark my words. So don't get mad. Use that as an opportunity to become the best lifter that's gonna prevent himself from getting snapped up. Just think about it, man. The average guy that can do RDLs, three sets of 10 or four or five, right here, when you load up 200 pounds and start rowing, it's not gonna feel like much because you're used to this position. And that's why I'm recommending the RDL over the conventional deadlift, even though they all go hand in hand. This is a little bit more specific to the problem you're experiencing right now. So in the meantime, if you gotta drop the weight from 225 to 185, go right ahead, keeping everything tight, focusing on controlling the weight, and especially squeezing at the lockout. You'll find that reps of 12 to 15, even 20, absolutely get the job done. All right, this is a long-term solution. We're addressing the root cause and including a little bit of lightweight rows in there. But if you wanna go heavier, then I do have another option, the Yates row. A partial repetition, since you're not as deep, but this right here should allow you to go very heavy while minimizing the stress in low back. Because the problem is you can't go in this position. It's similar to how guys can do block pulls without pain, but not deep deadlifts. Now, this is not the road that Dorian Yates used to use since that was underhand grip. All I'm saying is you want more elevation. Instead of being down here and doing your barbell rows, go a little bit higher. It could be here, right at the kneecap, or even beyond that point if you're really banged up. But in that case, I recommend holding at the top and controlling the eccentric while performing higher repetitions. So that's how you compensate for partials. You focus on the squeezes, the eccentrics, and a bit more volume. So this free weighted row will build your upper back like crazy while still giving you decent carry over the standard barbell rows and deadlifts too, believe it or not. So although partials aren't my number one choice for approach free training, if that's all you can do, I say go for it. But keep in mind, I wouldn't recommend doing this exclusively. I think a combination of the full range plus that upright back angle will suit you much better in the long term. So even though we can argue that full range on both days might be slightly better, maybe from a longevity standpoint, that's not necessarily the case, especially if you're going ham on your deadlifts. Perhaps that extra low back recovery will make a difference. You know, I'm just speculating, but at the end of the day, let's say no to black and white thinking, and yes to what makes sense for you right now. It's all about calibrating, all right? Now, if you got to this point of the video and still don't like what I've offered you, don't worry. I got one final solution besides the common advice of, hey, just do inverted rows, cable rows, and other variations, even dumbbell rows, which I would argue are probably not better for your lower back if 
you're getting pain right now because there is that shifting action side to side that can involve the obliques a little bit more. So core stabilization could be a limiting factor, but I digress. The final variation for this segment, which you've seen me promote so many times over the years, is the pen lay row. Because going back to deadlifts, if you don't have pain over here, just in the middle portion, which you're gonna stay in when you're doing RDLs, but then you get down here, conventional style, guess what? You literally deload the lower back. So how do you wanna get pain with a muscle that's not even active throughout the whole movement? It's turning on and off. Here, it's engaged, my lower back is on fire, but then the moment I'm here, it's still feeling it, right? But then there's that little halting sensation. So you don't get fatigue buildup. And that's why guys can do higher reps of 20 with heavy weight. It just doesn't hurt the lower back. So in a way, this really is the ultimate solution to this problem. You're simultaneously masking the issue while not contributing to further stress. So you gotta weigh out the pros and cons, but let me say that from a bodybuilding and strength training standpoint, I can't really think of much. Because you can say, oh, you're getting less TUT, but does that really matter if the upper back is still failing at the end of those sets? I don't think it does. Just that you manage to preserve your lower back integrity. It's not giving out before your upper back does. And that's the whole point of doing a free weighted row. You wanna become more athletic, the carryover is better, but if we're having to stop because this area is getting tired, then what's the point? So although I can say that getting a stronger RDL fixes all these issues, in the meantime, if you wanna do something that doesn't really have that much compromise, with maybe the eccentric, but again, even then, you can control it, and when you get to the bottom, you can just drop it very briefly this much, this is the way to do it. Penley rows all the freaking way. And as a bonus statement, let me say that penley rows go perfectly with weighted pull-ups. This way you get the eccentric loading from the vertical poles without the lower back stress, combined with the penleys that do a similar thing, but it's a horizontal, probably better, for the upper back and more carry over to the bench press in terms of giving you that stability, but nothing is getting hurt in the process. Basically, you have better recovery workout to workout. In this way, you can do more for your back while feeling less beat down session to session. So if you want to do nothing but pen lays, and that can be done with the dumbbell as well, by the way, I don't have a problem with it. Only thing you gotta pay attention to is the sets and reps. But as long as you nail that, bro, enjoy the gains because they really are spectacular and there's a reason why i chose them in my knowledge program anyway guys that's pretty much all i got for you today if you want more videos like this let me know to recap i would say that you need to start focusing more on your romanian deadlifts get it to be over 200 pounds compared to your standard barbell row for work sets then if you do intend on doing regular barbell rows drop the weight so 225 to 185 maybe even 135 155 do the exercise right introduce some pauses lower the weight slowly just make sure everything is kept tight. This is where you're getting more out of less weight and you can slowly build yourself up properly. Now that you're throwing weights around like crazy and using weights that aren't for your structural integrity right now. So there's that. And if you want to overload a bit more or just change up the angles because you don't like going that deep position and the Yates row is also a great choice, feel free to do it exclusively or alternate between the barbell row and the Yates row. And then finally, pen lays are pretty much a great alternative to everything that I talked about in today's video as a standalone procedure or just to complement the entire training program. So no matter what you do, I think that at least one of these options will be suitable for you. All right, so try out some of these strategies, let me know how it goes, and I'll see you in the next segment.